right, so boom, my name is Kip and we back with more Gran Turismo 7. This time we got a new update, which means new cars and three of the new cars you can see are purchasable in the used car dealership I already purchased them so we're going to go through them one by one and just kind of you know get a good look get a good feel get a good drive you know what i'm saying and uh that's what we're going to do so let's get to it we're going to start with our first new car of the update the honda civic sir 2 eg93 now, I don't know too much about the older Hondas. I'm more of a fan of the newer ones. So we're going to, you know, go through the bio and everything. And we're going to get a first look in VR. And we're just going to take it for a little test run. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to get it due. But before that, I want you to hit the like, comment, subscribe, and share. And turn notifications on. And we're going to get to it. Andy will be giving us a little history lesson. Compact, lightweight, and low to ground with an aggressive yet attractive body style. The fifth generation Civic introduced in 1991 is the quintessential boy racer car. What that mean? Many consider this model to be one of the best handling FF cars on the planet. The chassis features a double wishbone suspension and quick ratio steering system that made the car a monster through corners. The top of the line, Sir 2, came equipped with a naturally aspirated 1.6 liter DOHC VTEC engine. It was and remains the pride of Japan. The Civic is still popular today thanks to predecessors like this 1991 model. We already purchased it. So next, what we'll do is get a good look at it in VR. I love the VR showcase. So definitely uh, see what is, see what it looked like. Where we at? There you are. Hey, that engine. That's the ooh. That's that VTEC engine for sure. <laughs> mm. Love it. All right. So, what we're gonna do now is dial in like so. The menu ain't gonna show up unless you exit and go back in. There we go. VR showroom. We're gonna take it to this big ass empty parking lot. Mm. I love the detail that they put into these cars. Really takes a long time to develop. Give it a nice little 360. You know what I'm saying?
Okay, okay. Everything looking good. Everything looking good. can check the inside, look around a little bit. Very nice, very clean, clean inside, clean inside. See the dash, see the AC vents and everything. Check the mirrors. This is it at night. There we go. Be forgetting the buttons sometimes. Look at that. Look how old that. <laughs> this car still take cassette tapes. That's how old this car is. Check the back seats. Full door. Make sure nobody running up on me in this parking lot. Check the mirrors, we all good. You know, that's uh so that's it for the inspection. What we gonna do now is take it for a little test run. Me. I always enjoy my 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 test run course of choice will always be Tokyo Expressway. I'm gonna hit the paddock a little bit. See, see who's uh, see who's out here. up to the people say what's up to the good people so make sure I like to have the display off when I'm just cruising Take a nice cruise for a couple of laps, you know. It's a little test drive to get the feel of things. I'll stay. I'll stay in the. Uh, stay in the slow lane. Pay for that, man.
good now. They doing? Feels nice. Like how it feels. I wish you could change the time of day on the paddock courses. That'd be cool. pay for that. If this was a real test drive, I would be paying the dealership. Like, congratulations, you just bought yourself a brand new Civic. <laughs> All right, I, I think that concludes my test drive for the uh, Civic. I'll go uh, take what's left of it back to pits. <laughs> oh, man, that was crazy. All right.
All right, on to the next car. The next car we have is the Nissan Skyline. Oh. <clears throat> the next car we have is the Nissan Skyline GTS R R31 from 1987. Let's do some learn more. All 31 introduced in 1985 represented the seventh generation of the Nissan Skyline brand. The most superior version was the GTS R that was introduced in 1987. Created with the purpose of winning the Japanese Touring Car Championship, Japan's top touring car event at the time. It was a homologation model developed in accordance with International Group A regulations. Under the hood, Nissan added a new turbocharger to the GTS base model's 2.0 liter inline six. Exterior tweaks included a larger spoiler along with other aerodynamic equipment. This R31 Skyline GTS R had a limited production run of about 800 units. So it should come as no surprise that this model became a true collector's item of the famous Skyline series. That's it. So we're gonna head to the showroom. Okay. There it is. Get yeah, that engine. Look at those wheels. I like the wheels. Got the GT emblem right there. A little close up on the wheels. Comfort. Get real close up on the wheels, you can actually see like the wheel specs. That's such a great detail. Got the GTS engraving on the grill. Take it back up top. Tell how old this car is because it got the antenna that extends and retracts. Got the signature Skyline tail lights. Nissan Motorsports International. All right. Wait, wait. We got to go. We got to do the sit inside the vehicle, you know? All right. Yes, this is this is very old school. You know, old school for me is you know, '90s basically because I was a baby. Oh, it has it has a is that rear white and rear wash? Now that's different. You typically don't see cars, well, you definitely see cars these days with rear wipe and wash. 
but I don't feel like that was typically a thing for cars back then. All right. Check the back seats. All right. That's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now is take this baby on a test drive. Going back to Tokyo Expressway. So clearly, I know that North America, slash Central and South America, too always works for me for whatever reason no other room in the paddock works for me just this one so for anybody who lives on the southeastern region of the united states maybe it'll work for you too um, but this is the only one that has worked consistently for me so i think from now on i will stay on this one but anyway Right. Let's go. Is that beeping because I forgot to put on my seatbelt? I have no idea what that chiming is. It's all good. Oh. What did I do? Blinkers work. Okay, so the chiming comes on whenever I go into third. That's interesting. I 
I don't know what that means. Oh. Zooming by in the GT, I see. Skyline meets new Skyline. the feel for it now. It's a real smooth ride. Although anything could be a smooth ride when you're a skilled driver, really. You just gotta get the feel for it. I'm not sure what the reason for the chiming is. I'm sure there's a real life explanation for it. But. end my test drive here uh, we'll move on to the next vehicle for our next vehicle we have the Volvo 240 SC Estate 93 let's see what the dealer could tell us about this one say the word estate to European car enthusiasts and they're bound to think of the Volvo 240 Estate this station wagon made its debut in 1974 and enjoyed a long life with a production run that stretched for two decades. Although it was discontinued more than 30 years ago, the model remains popular to this day. Built with the philosophy of form following function, the 240 provides excellent outward vision and superb handling. Some users have logged several hundred thousand kilometers on their vehicles, so you can bet it's a reliable machine. Sure, it may not be fast, but it's stylish and has plenty of luggage space, making it the ideal companion for extended road trips. Right, thank you for the information. What we'll do now is we will check it out in the VR showroom. Nice little station wagon, you know. It has wipers on the headlights. It has headlight wipers. That's something you don't see every day. Oh, I'm blind.
headlight wipers. Man, that's vintage. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something you don't see every day. Especially not on cars in America. So. Yeah, that's real interesting. I like that. It's like wiping your eyes, you know? Check the wheels. Comfort, of course. We can see that thing. Yep. See the exhaust. Got the tow hook right there. 240 SE Estate. Got the old antenna. Oh, that one got the flex antenna. Okay. Look at the roof. Look at my roof. Nice little, nice little family vehicle we got here. Check the lights again. Check the lights. Okay. Let's take a seat inside. All right. Typical wheel. I wish you could honk the horn. This is what the inside looks like little interior view here got the sunroof see the doors and everything little old school dashboard radio and the AC Key compartment. Got the old school speakers in the doors like that. Okay. Oh, automatic windows. Nice. Check the mirrors. All right. There you have it. Nice little 360 and interior view. What we're going to do now is take it on a test drive. I think we should take it to Europe. We could take it on the Autodrome, the Nürburgring, or Deep Forest. I think Deep Forest would be good. Does nobody drive on deep forest? <laughs> Guess not. Never fails. North America, Central and South America too. All right.
Alright. This one's a little less handly than the uh, GTR. I think it's a little more handily than the Civic, though. But also, it's slower, so understandable. Look at those waterfalls. Beautiful. Man, play really has no limits. Who would have thought in 2024 we would be able to test drive some of our favorite cars and some of the most accessible cars in a VR on a video game and make it genuinely feel like the real thing. Amazing. Amazing how far technology has come. And this and what I got is pretty much entry level. This ain't the top of the top in true immersion technology when it comes to this type of stuff. Narrowly avoided the wall. That's what I'm talking about. Save my money. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Damn. Look at the mountains. This is a cruise right here. For real. it. Alright. Well, that was the Volvo and then we'll move on to the next vehicle. Okay, so for our next new vehicle, we got the Volvo V40 T5 R Design 13. I'm surprised we don't have more Volvo cars in Brand Central. That's that's surprising, honestly. I would have thought there were more, but I guess not. This is the first Volvo added to Brand Central. As far as my knowledge goes, if somebody knows more please correct me but we're gonna see what the dealer gotta say this v40 was volvo's most popular product in the 2010s it was an elegant compact hatchback fun fact i love hatchbacks so this should be enjoyable which combined the simplicity of a sedan with the utility of a station wagon 
Its exterior styling was strongly influenced by classic Volvos of the 1960s, such as the P1800 and the 1800ES. And thanks to the company's innovative safety features, the V40 gained extreme popularity as a family hauler. The T5 R design was the sportiest of the line, possessing sports car-like handling that catered to enthusiast drivers. That's the kind of car I prefer. Road going, family vehicle, with a design that kind of leans more toward the sports side. So, you know, you got your, you got your WRXs, you got your Civics, you got your Corollas. I own a Corolla uh, that, you know, they're kind of all purpose vehicles for real. So that's kind of my lane, my speed. And they can be tuned to the absolute maximum and made into monsters. So, yeah. That was a good bit of information. Thank you for that. And we'll move on to the showroom. Yes. Okay. Now that I own the vehicle, we could head to the showroom. There it is. Yeah, that engine. I like the wheels. The grill looks nice too. I said this is just a really nice looking car. I like it. And I'm already partial to hatchbacks, so this is a plus in my book. A nice little three sixty. roof looks like see what the exhaust looks like Volvo <laughs> I always chuckle because Volvo sounds dangerously close to a word that I cannot say or it is not family friendly. <laughs> ah, I'm blind. Turn it off. All right. We did a 360 on the outside. Now let's check out the inside. I like the dash. Is that a phone? It comes with a car phone. Nice. Is this how they do it over in the UK? Our design on the seats. Mirrors, got electric windows. 
like the wheel design. Automatic, supersonic, hypnotic, funky fresh, push, push start engine. Let's turn on the lights. Oh, even these are back. Even the. Uh, Seat adjustments are backlit, so electric seats. Nice, nice. Got the AC control in there. I wish the center, um, the center screens would turn on on the cars. You typically don't see that, not in this game at least. But it'd be cool if they added that too. Well, that concludes the uh, showroom. So, what will move on to next is the test drive Let's see where we where we headed to it's a european car so we got to take it to europe europe we don't have a, a We don't have a Swedish course. So what's the close what's the closest to Sweden? Either Germany or Switzerland, I guess. We did deep forest, so we'll check out the Nürburgring. Cruise on the Nürburgring in our Volvo hatchback. All right, we in here. Without further ado, let's uh, dial in and uh, get to driving. Since this is automatic. It's nice not having to touch the <laughs> it's nice to drive automatic sometimes. behind me I could have went very bad, but it did not. Let's 
Just a nice cruise in good old Nurburgring. It's nice, sometimes it's nice to just drive. You don't always got to race. Oh no. My deposit. Yeah, but sometimes it feels nice to just cruise and drive. You ain't got to do a whole lot of racing. You ain't got to worry about motherfuckers trying to run you off the road. Even though this is paddock, so there's still people out here trying to push to the limit. So you might get ran off the road still, but there's a lot less pressure because you're not trying to win a race. Sometimes you just want to cruise knowing there's other people around that you may or may not run into. Sometimes you want to test the limits of your car, but you don't want to do so alone. cruising along. Yeah, they advertise an AMG. I feel like the AMG was pretty much made for this course. I've driven on this course so many times, I pretty much know it like the back of my hand.
is the final stretch. I could definitely see myself just driving in a car like this for everyday purposes. This is nice. to miss the pits. That's all right. Don't park on the side here. There we go. Very nice, very nice. All right. That was the Volvo. Oh, somebody else is driving the Volvo. No, that's me. <laughs> so that was the Volvo V40 T5 R Design 2013. And we'll be moving on to the final car added in this update. And I feel like this car was one that was well anticipated and probably well received. For this one, we head into the legend cars because this car is nothing short of legendary. You see the company it's among. You see the company it's among. You know what we're talking about. GT500. And you can't mention the GT500 without mentioning the Honda NSX GT500. One of the more iconic cars of the Gran Turismo series. We're going to see how much love Polyphony decided to pay to it. So. The Castro Mugen NSX was one of the standouts in the competitive 2000 JGTC season. It became the first Honda NSX to win a high-level Japanese GT championship. In the top GT500 class of the Japanese GT car championship, there was a real dogfight between the factory teams of Honda, Nissan, and Toyota who were always trying to one-up each other. That's the big three right there. Since 1997, Honda had been competing with its NSX GT race car, but tuning regulations in the JGTC restricted the development of the NSX GT. This led to less than satisfactory results on the track, but Honda's race department refused to give up. Through tuning of the car's aerodynamics and improvements to weight balance, the NSX steadily improved year after year. All of that perseverance came to fruition in the 2000 season when the Castro Mugen NSX took home the series championship. Today, the original NSX has become a consummate collector car, an icon of Japanese automobiles, and this car represents the model's legacy as a timeless, persistent race machine. Damn, what a tribute. And we about to check it out. I'm glad I got the money for this. Very nice. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Gonna head to the garage 
and we're going to give it the showroom treatment. Ooh, you hear that? This is it, man. The Mugen. The Castro Mugen NSX is finally here. And it is beautiful. NSX is definitely one of the top five car designs of all time. And it's really no debate. See the, the red Honda Type R emblem? Customary for Honda's racing models. See the, the signature gold rims. Look at that skirt. Oh my god. I just love how the the uh JGTC cars are designed. Cause I mean, look at them. Beautiful. Magnesium forged wheel. Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful car. And the gold pipes. I don't even know if it's gold for real, but it looked gold. I want to see it at night. Yes. Ooh -wee. Headlights on again. See that? Oh my God! Crazy. All right. That's the outside. We're gonna check out the inside. Not all that much to the inside, you know, your typical JGTC setup. Everything's pretty much all, all the entertainment has pretty much been yanked out and replaced with racing components. You got your, you got your, uh, got your sequential shifter. I assume that's what that is. If my terminology is wrong, once again, please correct me. I'm not all that knowledgeable on cars. I just really like cars. <laughs> yeah. Is that an air vent? I guess if you ain't got AC, you ain't trying to burn up in this motherfucker. <laughs> you wearing them full suits and whatnot. Yeah, not 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 too much. Is that a cup holder? Is there at least a cup holder? <laughs> Can I get some water in this motherfucker? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I like the dash. All right. That's pretty much it for the showroom. And the only thing we got left now is the test drop. Now, since this is a JG, blah, 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 JG TC car, it's only right that I take it to a JG TC course. We're going to Suzuka, baby. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody here. People don't like Suzuka. All right, man. Let's take this beauty on the test run. All right, let's do it. Let's see if I can push it. go Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Got a little too overzealous. <laughs> All right. Let's run it again. Let's go. wide turn but we got it oh <laughs> oh man all right all right gotta finish my lap man i'll finish the lap I gotta 
I gotta readjust for this. I was doing a bunch of road calls so far, but this is a race car right here. I need one clean lap. I need one clean lap. Just give me one clean lap and I'm good. All right, we're gonna take it serious. We're gonna, we're gonna get an extra clean lap this time. One more, one more, one more, one more, <laughs> one more. I didn't crash, but it still wasn't clean. Let me get one more.
Okay, okay, one more, one more. Last one, I promise. <laughs> Clean or not, that's the last one, I'll promise. I just really enjoy driving this car. That's it. That's it. All right. That's it. All right, man. That. Glasses. That concludes the showcase slash test drive slash first look at the new additions to Gran Turismo 7 with this update that's the May update and yeah for me I would say I definitely had a good time in all the cars I enjoyed all of them um, for me if I rank them my least favorite one starting from my least favorite one would be the uh station wagon not that it was bad but you know just not my style you know and i like station wagons i like the subaru station wagon for sure but you know it just wasn't my style mm. and number one obviously for me would be the castro mugen nsx GT500. I love that car. It's just an amazing car. Yeah. So, that's it. Uh, for me personally, I liked all the additions and I can't wait for what else they have in store. I wish Polyphony would, you know, work on some new courses for sure. You know, we're still waiting on apricot hill we still waiting on special stage route 5 route 7 route 11 all that you know still waiting on seattle circuit still waiting on man they need to bring back city tracks for real i'm just saying but in any case i'll save that for another video save that rant for another video Get one last look at it. Mm. Damn. <laughs> yeah, man, that's it, man. That's the end of this video. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. Appreciate y'all riding with me. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Comment and tell me what you think, man. Do you like 
all the calls they added. Do you dislike ones? Tell me which one was your favorite, which one was your least favorite? What car would you have preferred that they added? You know, all that. And uh, subscribe if you wanna see more, turn on notifications, and follow me on all my socials. My name is Kip, I'm signing off. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.